What is up guys, Nintendo here once again, and it is time for part 3 of my Nintendo Switch collection. There's gonna be no fancy footage, there's not even gonna be my dumb face. I'm just gonna quickly show you the 30-ish games that I got in the last uh, year or so since the last time I did one of these videos. So let's get straight into it with a couple of imports that should still be available, and you want to get these because they are awesome. First of all, we've got Bots and Kaitos 1 and 2 HD Remaster, which contains the two games from GameCube, two of the not very many RPGs on that system. They are turn-based combat, but it's also a card system in the turn-based combat. Gorgeous graphics and something I'm really stoked to get. You can still find this on Play Asia if I'm not mistaken. Okay, this is a funny one. I tried recording this video so many times over the last couple days and just kept tripping over my words, but while I was recording today, this showed up. We've got Blacksmith of the Sand Kingdom, so this is literally my newest pickup. And yeah, it looks like a really cool RPG, but you're trying to become a blacksmith, so I assume there's crafting, and yeah, it looks like almost tactical combat, but I really like the art style, and I'm looking forward to playing this one for sure. And I feel like this is one, gonna be one of those games that's kind of uncommon. But yeah, Blacksmith of the Sand Kingdom, pretty cool looking. Okay, I guess I misspoke. That last one was not one of the imports. This was the other import, Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon, Chronicles, and and it is two games in one. The back is entirely in Japanese, but I believe this does have English, otherwise I probably wouldn't have bought it. But yeah, I got this from Play Asia as well, and two games for one. I feel like these collections are going to become pretty uncommon in the future, so pick it up while you can. Okay, moving on to Bug Fables, The Everlasting Sapling. I was really hoping to get a copy of this, and I found it locally not that far from me, and I am stoked. Limited run game. This is a turn-based RPG, but it's very, very reminiscent of something like Super Mario RPG. And the graphics are really cool, it's a really cute style, and yeah, it looks really neat. I haven't played it yet, but I've been looking forward to it, and it comes with a little manual, which is neat too, so yeah. Bug Fables, pretty awesome. Get this while you can. I have the feeling this will be rare in the future. Another very recent pickup that I haven't had a chance to play yet because my backlog is a mile long and is getting longer and longer every day, but here's CrossCode, a really cool looking RPG. I believe it's an action RPG, but it's old school pixel style, and it just looks awesome. The spells look awesome, it looks like a little bit faster combat, and yeah, it looks like a pretty good game. The thing about this game is, is it's super, super cheap right now. I got this because it was like, man, maybe 15 bucks, but yeah, CrossCode, get it while you can, you never know this might be a rare one as well. Somehow I missed a couple games from the last couple videos, and they've been in my collection for a long time, and I don't know, I have no idea how I missed them, but this is one of the first Switch games I ever actually got for some reason I missed, but it's Dragon Mark for Death, and this is a weird, like, side-scrolling action RPG, but you can do co-op, local co-op, and online, and it's just a crazy, crazy time. Really weird, really cool game. But yeah, Dragon Mark for Death, anybody heard of this one? Another purchase from GameSwap. This is really awesome. I couldn't believe I found this, but this is Dragon Quest Collection. It's a three-pack. Dragon Quest 1, Dragon Quest 2, Luminaries of the Legendary Line, and Dragon Quest 3, The Seeds of Salvation, all on one cartridge, which is really damn cool. I don't remember if this is an import or not. It's all in English, but I swore this was an import. I'm not really sure, but Square Enix, really cool. Oh, and the case is like an import, so maybe it is. But it's just white on the inside, and of course the cartridge isn't in there because I am currently playing Dragon Quest 2. But these are actually the mobile versions of the game, so some people might hate the art style. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I don't know, I'm kind of undecided. But anyways, this is a really cool item. Definitely something that is not going to be common in the future. Moving on to a game that I had a lot of fun with, Ender Lily's Quietus of the Nights is a really, really badass side-scrolling exploratory adventure game, otherwise known as a Metroidvania to some. I personally am not offended by the term Metroidvania and do use it. But yeah, this is a really cool dark fantasy 2D action RPG according to the back and the art style is amazing. The soundtrack is really fitting and dark and moody and melancholy. If you get a chance, get Ender Lilies, give it a try. This one was really, really good. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. This is six games in one, another collection, and man, I really do have the feeling that these are going to be uncommon and or rare in the future. The original version that came out for this is actually very rare, but this is the Play Asia version, which I believe is still available, so get it while you can. It is $80, but it is well worth it. Final Fantasy 1 through 6 in stunning, beautiful HD and just a ton of fun. I've already played Final Fantasy 4 through completion, and I'm at the end of Final Fantasy 5, and I plan on playing all of them again because, yes, Final Fantasy rules, especially these old ones. It just sounds and looks so good. Who has this in their collection? 
Moving on to another Play Asia exclusive, and I love this sideways cover, but Final Fantasy IX, this is a really cool game. This was given to me by my girlfriend, thank you so much for that. Like I said, I really love the art, and Final Fantasy IX is just one of the greatest RPGs ever made. This is kind of strange because the backgrounds are like new and they have the old pixels, but it still looks pretty good. I really like it, but it's really weird how it's just blank on the inside. But yeah, Final Fantasy IX, really cool thing to have. I'm not sure if this is still available or not. A very recent acquisition, Fire Emblem Engage. This is such a new one, I haven't even popped it in at all, but when I opened... The cover, I was really pleasantly surprised by this awesome, awesome art. Really cool stuff. I like the visual style, I like the cover, and yeah, it looks like something I'm gonna enjoy. I'm sure I can guess what kind of game it is, you know, it's just more Fire Emblem action. It's gonna be tactical RPG action. The ha hairstyles are wacky as hell, but you know, I'm looking forward to this one. It looks pretty damn cool. Alright, moving on to Harvestella, a really cool Square Enix game. That is a farming simulator slash RPG, not unlike Rune Factory, but definitely different. And yeah, this is a game that I feel like has the potential to be a rare one in the future. It's really beautiful, and yeah, again, nothing on the inside. But yeah, this is one of those games that I don't think is going to be printed in very large quantities. So get your copy while you can, especially because it's dirt cheap right now. I got this for $25. Hell yeah! Oh god, here we go. Legend of Heroes Trails from Zero Deluxe Edition. Here we go with the Trails games. My god, I have so many of these. This one I have played, and I really like this one. It was really fun. But I haven't played it a ton or anything. Again, backlog. But yeah, I love the perspective. I love the graphics. Presentation, the story was really cool. And yeah, really neat. You get a uh, special support dossier. There's a versatile R. Pretty cool. NIS. You know there's not going to be a ton of copies of this. Get it while you can, especially because this game kicks ass. Really fun. And here's the second Legend of Heroes game. Trails to Azure Deluxe Edition. This came out not that horribly long ago, so my copy is still sealed. This looks like a really awesome game. Again, I really like the art style. I'm sure the soundtrack's going to be amazing. And yeah, this is another one that I need to dive into. I've only played a couple Legend of Heroes games, but I plan on deep diving into multiples of them. Hopefully soon. Maybe. We shall see. And the third game in this series in this list, we've got The Legend of Nayuta Boundless Trails, which is not necessarily a Legend of Heroes game, but it's definitely attached to the whole franchise. And again, NIS, this game is more than likely going to be something that you want to pick up right now, because it's just going to be more expensive in the future. If you're an RPG player and collector like I am, you are really going to want to get this while you can. And there's the reverse art, pretty cool stuff. I am really looking forward to playing Labyrinth of Zangetsu. I got this a few months ago and haven't played it yet. I got it with another first-person dungeon crawler, and they both looked awesome. The other one I have played, but this one I haven't gotten to yet. The art style looks amazing. Just really cool. Demons and ghosts and all kinds of creepy stuff, but a lot of it's black and white. Like I said, it's a first-person dungeon crawler RPG, and uh, there you go. Really, really, really cool art on the inside. So how many of you guys have heard of this game, and how many of you guys are now wanting this game? Because I think you should get it while you can. Moving on, we have a truly, truly great game. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which is basically Breath of the Wild times 10. It's just Breath of the Wild plus more, plus more, plus more. You know, you've got the Sky World, you've got the Underworld, and now you can create stuff and build stuff, and it is very engaging, though I must say it is overwhelming. I have not beaten this yet. I played quite a bit of it, and then I was just overwhelmed and wanted to play something different, and then... Kind of never went back to it, but I plan on restarting it soon. There we go, Tears of the Kingdom. Very, very fun game. It was a lot of fun solving the puzzles. How many of you guys have heard of Mato Anomalies? A really badass visual novel slash RPG. The graphics are amazing. Really cool. I'd show you the inside, but it is just nothing but pure white. But how many of you guys have heard of this game? This was weird. I was at GameSwap not that long ago, and I had just seen a video mentioning Metal Max Xeno, and I believe it was Hollowed Be Thy Game that said something about it. And lo and behold, like the very next day, Metal Max Xeno Reborn was sitting there. This is an RPG with like tank combat, and it just looks amazing. I'm really, really looking forward to diving into this one, and this is actually one I'm planning on playing very, very soon. It just looks so cool. I love the graphical style, but yeah. Anybody heard of this game? 
Moving on to an RPG that I have not yet played, but I'm not really sure I'm looking forward to it. I picked it up because it was ultra cheap, and then I heard terrible things about it. But Monarch Deluxe Edition, another NIS title. And yeah, it's a third person perspective. I think it's an action RPG. And it looks cool. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It, it looks really neat, and I love the reverse art. But apparently it's clunky and doesn't run that well, and it's repetitive, so we shall see. I honestly want to play it just to form my own opinion anyway, so we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. This game is awesome, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you that Octopath Traveler 2 is freaking amazing. It is so good, and the graphical style is beautiful. God, I love HD 2D. There's so many games that, you, that could really use the HD 2D remaster look. That would be so badass, but Octopath Traveler will have to do. What's with the blank insides? Remember when games had more stuff? And here we've got a gift from my girlfriend's brother. Thank you so much for this, John. Pokemon Legends Arceus. I actually do want to play this. I'm looking forward to playing this Pokemon game because I'm not traditionally into them. However, I like the new art style. I like that they're trying to change it a bit. I know that graphically it's not going to blow my head off, but I think it's really going to be kind of a fun time. I'm looking forward to this one. What do you guys think about this game? Okay, story time. Shadowrun Trilogy. Oh, geez. I ordered this from Limited Run a long, long time ago and finally got it, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. I ordered it probably a year ago and I realized that people were getting their copies and I was seeing copies for sale, so I reached out to Limited Run and I was like, what gives? Where's my copy? And they said it somehow got lost or something happened to the order and so... <laughs> They had to reorder it, and I had to wait for it again, but it didn't take long once I actually made the complaint. But here we go. This copy sealed because I have played the digital versions. I love Shadowrun. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. And so I have played all the way through the first one, and I'm at the end of the second one, and my god, this game is so damn buggy. The second game is so damn buggy. Uh, I will go on a rant about this at some point, however, the games are freaking amazing. They are cool, tactical, cyberpunk games with combat very similar to, like, XCOM games. That's a great example of, like, what type of combat to expect. But yeah, Shadowrun Trilogy, sorry for the rant, it's just limited run. Sometimes they are too much, and I almost stopped using them, but sometimes they still put out cool things. But sometimes they put out trash, whatever. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Calabunga Collection, hell yeah, there are so many games on here. 13 games, oh my god, and you know, they're just classics. There's so many classics on here, and a few of them are fairly uncommon or even rare. You've got the third TMNT game on Game Boy on here, and I mean, that's a pretty spendy game, so it's really neat to have all these in one collection. Easy access, and yeah, support Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, because they kick ass. And speaking of which, of course I have Shredder's Revenge, however, <laughs> you're gonna be surprised, I've never actually played this. By the time I actually got my copy from, was this limited run? Yeah, by the time I got my copy of this, because I didn't buy it digitally, I didn't want to double dip. I, like, the hype had died down for it, I actually, like, kind of forgot about it on my shelf, and then I just never got around to it. And then I installed it one time, and then I just never played it. So yeah, I'm sure you guys love this game, I'm sure you think this is blasphemous, but yeah, again, I have so many RPGs that I'm working on at the same time. This one just kind of fell by the wayside and I've never actually played it. But, that's not to say I'm not looking forward to playing it. I will eventually, it looks badass, looks like a really cool side-scrolling beat-em-up, a la the old days. What do you guys think about Shredder's Revenge? Man, when I ask for Trinity Trigger, I was expecting a case this big, and instead they brought out this behemoth, which is, like, pretty dang big. It's this cool little special edition for Trinity Trigger. I got this not that long ago, and it was like, what the hell? It was like 30 bucks or something like that. It's like, wow, what a presentation. Holy crap. So, this is a Secret of Mana looking game, and it comes with a soundtrack and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty freaking neat. This was a total, total value. And yeah, looking forward to playing this one as well. Holy crap, I have so many RPGs. What the hell? You ever like to go online after having a couple beers and just randomly order games? Because yeah, that's how this happened. 
Turrican flashback. I'm not even the hugest Turrican fan. If you don't know, they're like side-scrolling games. They're kind of shoot 'em up, but they have an almost Metroid-ish vibe to them, but not nearly as good. But yeah, they're side-scrolling. They're shooty. They're run-and-gun action, and yeah, it's got Turrican, Super Turrican, Mega Turrican, and Turrican 3. Again, I don't know what my brain was thinking, but here you go, Turrican flashback, but uh, hey, it's another one of those collections, and again, these could become uncommon. I've actually never heard of anybody talking about this particular Switch game, so if you do like Turrican, you should probably check this out and get yourself a copy, because I'll bet, I am willing to bet, that this is not going to be made much, and there's not going to be many copies available, so get it while you can. Speaking of which, we've got Ultra Age from some company called Dangan Entertainment. I've never even heard of them. This was another purchase where I was like, yeah, screw it, it's kind of cheap, and it looks cool. It looks like an action RPG, but maybe more action than RPG. And yeah, this was fairly cheap. Get yourself a copy if you haven't heard of it. Another game that I need to dive into, but yeah, it looks cool. It looks really neat. And I got this actually around the same time as Turrican. I might have even ordered these the same night. Like I said, you have a couple too many beers and you start ordering games. And that's how you end up with a ton of Switch games. Sheesh. Oh, another RPG. Yeah, you have a problem, Nintendo. This one I played not that long ago, Undernaught's Labyrinth of Yomi. This is a really cool game. This is a first-person dungeon crawler. And you get to create your own characters. And it's got a really dark vibe, really cool art style, neat music. Everything about this game screams, I am going to be uncommon later on. But yeah, Undernaught's Labyrinth of Yomi, really cool game if you like them first-person dungeon crawlers. Alright, moving on, we've got We Love Katamari Reroll plus Royal Reverie. I'm not really sure what Royal Reverie is, but We Love Katamari was originally on the PS2, and I'm hoping all the Katamari games get repressings and rerolls or whatever the hell they're called, but yeah, really, really fun game. You roll things up, and they get bigger and bigger, and your ball gets giant, and eventually you can roll up everything from thumbtacks to cats to dogs to people, RC cars, uh, forks, knives, uh, parrots. I mean, you roll up everything up to houses and towns. But yeah, we love Katamari. Really fun. And it took me a little while to get a copy of this, but yeah, glad I did. It's kind of cheap right now, so get it while you can. We love Katamari is amazing, and the Katamari games in general rule. I'm hoping they all get re-rolls. That would be sweet. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Torna, the Golden Country. This is the European import. It's still sealed. This was a gift from my girlfriend, and for when I am done with Xenoblade Chronicles 1, then I can move on to 2, and then I can move on to this DLC. Kinda cool that they have the DLC for this in a physical format, as this is considered by some people the best part of the series. And yeah, this is just a really, really cool looking game, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm currently playing through Xenoblade Chronicles 1, finally and then I will be able to move on to the others. But yeah, what do you guys think about this? And that is it. That is the last game. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. What was your favorite game in this pile? What have you picked up recently? And how is your Switch collection going? Are you looking forward to the Switch 2? I know I am. It better be backwards compatible with a collection like this. What do you guys think? Thanks for watching. You guys rule. Much love, and keep rocking the retro games!